Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to look at something very special when we deal with geometric series we're going to deal with the finite geometric series here we have a series that actually declines in number in size as we go on and starting with one then one half one fourth so again we know it's a geometric series because we're going to find the common ratio we're going to take any one number divided by the previous number for example we're going to take one sixteenth and divided by the previous number one eight which is equal to one sixteenth times 8 over 1 because when you divide by fractions the same as multiplying by its inverse you can see that this is equal to 1 over 2 so that's a common ratio it's 1 half so each next number is half the size of the previous one so if we want to find let's say the seventh number or the eighth number let's see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 yeah let's say I want to find the seventh number in the series how do we do that well here we have this is a um, uh, s sub 7 is equal to a sub 1 which is the first one times the common ratio which is 1 half raised to the n power where we're looking for the seventh one minus the first one in the series <coughs> all divided by the common ratio minus 1 which is 1 half minus 1 <coughs> excuse me so let's work that out so 1 over 2 to the seventh power is equal to 1 over 128 so that's uh, 1 over 128 uh, minus 1 all divided by 1 half minus 1 that's minus 1 half okay um, 1 over 128 minus 1 that would be minus 127 over 128 so minus 127 over 128 divided by a minus 1 half so the minuses cancel out and divided by a fraction same as multiplying by its inverse so this is equal to um, minus 127 over 128 times 2 over 1. Of course, that's minus 2 over 1. The minuses cancel out. So this is equal to uh, 127 over 64. So that would be the sum of the first seven terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 would be 1 over 64. And that's what this is equal to. And of course, that is the slightly less than 2. So that's almost equal to to 2. All right. So that's how we find the sum, just like before, of the first so many terms. Now, what if we want to find the sum of all the terms out to infinity? What will that number be equal to? Now, that's kind of interesting because the numbers get smaller and smaller as we go out. So to find the sum of the entire series out to infinity, what do you think we're going to get? Well, let's find out. So we take the first one, which is 1, times the common ratio, which in this case is 1 half, raised to the infinity minus the first one all divided by the ratio one half minus one now what is one half to the infinity well one to the infinity is still one but one oh, but two to infinity is an infinite number so this becomes equal to one over infinity minus one over one half minus one would be minus one half and so this number becomes zero because anything divided by infinity is zero so this now becomes minus 1 multiplied times the inverse of the denominator, which is a negative 2 over 1, which is equal to a positive 2. So you can see that if you just keep adding terms out to infinity to the infinite term, the total number of this particular geometric series will equal 2. So that means that the more terms I add, the closer and closer and closer I will get to 2. And eventually, if I add an infinite number of terms, I get 2. So in this case, this particular series converges when you add an infinite number of terms. That's not always the case, but in this case it is. And that's how you check that. So, a very special case of a geometric series, and this it's called the finite geometric series. Oh yes, there was one more thing I wanted to show you. Find the, the n, the, which number in the series is it if the a sub n is 1 over 128. So to do that, well, I'm going to need a little bit of room, so I'm going to erase some of the board here, so I get a little bit more room. All right, take this example out, and copy that down. So we have a sub n is equal to 1 over 128, and what is n equal to? Question mark. And of course, we know that the n number of a geometric series is equal to um, um, the common ratio to the, uh, well, let me uh, see here. All right, yeah, so it's the first term times the common ratio times the n minus 1. There we go. I forgot the formula. All right, so 
if a sub n is 1 over 128, so we get 1 over 128 is equal to a sub 1, which is 1, times the common ratio, in this case is 1 half, raised to the n minus 1. So that would be n minus 1 like that. So how do we figure that out? Well, simplifying this just a little bit because we don't need the 1 there. So we can have 1 over 128 is equal to 1 half raised to the n minus 1 power. So we can solve that by taking the natural log of both sides. So take the natural log of the left side, natural log of 1 over 128, is equal to the natural log of 1 half raised to the n minus 1 power, like that. And of course, the rules of logarithm tells us that we have the log of something raised to a power that can go into the front. So now we have the natural log of 1 over 128 is equal to n minus 1 times the natural log of 1 half. And then we can divide the, both sides by the natural log of 1 half to isolate n minus 1. So here we can write that the natural log of 1 over 128 divided by the natural log of 1 half is equal to n minus 1. And now we're almost there, because if we now add 1 to both sides, we can now say that the natural log of 128, 1 over 128, divided by the natural log of 1 half, plus 1, because I put the minus 1 to the other side, that equals n. And now all I need is a calculator to figure out what that is equal to. So 1 divided by 128, take the natural log of that. And then divide the natural log of point. 1 half, uh, 0.5 equals, and then we add 1 to that, plus 1, and we get 8. So in this case, we can see that this is equal to 7 plus 1, which is 8. That's kind of a, a neat way to find the, the uh, n, what uh, term is it, what number are we dealing with if the nth number is 1 over 128 in this series. Okay, and that's how you do that.